Welcome. During this demo, we'll be showing the latest version of Yellowbrick Data Warehouse and the Yellowbrick Manager. Our cloud-native product runs on all the major public clouds, and that's what we'll demonstrate for you today. Yellowbrick makes it easy for users to get started. As soon as you log into the Yellowbrick Manager, you'll see the Getting Started page. We've included a series of videos on various topics and quick access to things like loading and querying data, provisioning and managing clusters, exploring databases, and a section on how to connect your applications to Yellowbrick. One thing to keep in mind when you're connecting your favorite application to Yellowbrick is that we look like a Postgres database to the outside world. If your tool supports Postgres, it'll work with Yellowbrick. There are many ways to navigate across the Yellowbrick user interface. The easiest is the main navigation panel on the left. The home icon brings you back to this main screen at any time. Navigate to data warehouse instances when managing an environment. To query data, navigate to the query tool. Use the Load Assistant if you want to load data. You can also get to configuration information from the navigation panel. Let's dive into the data warehouse instances. When you open the dashboard section, you can see what instances are running and which one you are connected to. If you click on the dropdown, you'll notice we only have one instance here, but you can manage multiple instances through this single yellow brick manager environment. Those instances could be running in multiple clouds or hybrid, where they might be running on premises and in the cloud. You can access all instances from this single pane of glass. Yellow Brick Manager provides an overview of how much data is loaded into this instance, the status and the health of the instance, and what site we're loaded on. In this case, we are on AWS US East 1. You can also see the version and get to the host import information. This is helpful if you are going to be connecting tools. Click here to copy the information into the clipboard and use that to connect to this database instance. In the middle of the UI, you can see the top databases in the environment. Out of the 19, we are seeing the top five, and you can also see the top clusters. One of the things that's different about running in the cloud versus running on-premises is that on-premises, you will typically have just one cluster that you're working with. In the cloud, you can have multiple clusters. For our example here, we've got 15 total. From here, you can also see all query activity. Since this is a demo, the activity here is pretty quiet. In an actual production environment, you would see all activity here in this interface. You can also navigate to events from this interface as well. Let's explore the databases section. Here you'll see all of the databases running in the environment. We support multiple databases. We are showing 19 databases here. If you want to quickly find which database you're looking for, you can search for it. In this example, we search for TPC and that finds the TPC DS dataset. From here, you can see information like the number of tables and rows. You can also see storage utilization, both compressed and uncompressed. You can see what kind of compression ratio you're utilizing. You can quickly get to load data and query data from here as well. Yellowbrick makes it easy with many ways to navigate through the UI. Clicking into the database allows you to quickly see the schemas that are in the environment. With the appropriate permissions, you can quickly create new schemas, identify owners, and all top-level information. Clicking into the schema reveals the tables, views, sequences, and procedures that are available. It's simple to quickly search for a table. In this case, we are searching store returns. In the general tab, you can see overview information about the database, the schema, and details like rows and total size. You can also view the definition, showing the DDL information for that table. Copying that information to a clipboard captures the information for use elsewhere. From this view, you can see Analyze Activity, Load Activity, as well as Privileges. In Privileges, you can manage your users, roles, and privileges on the different objects, allowing you to save that information in SQL and reuse it. Navigating back to Clusters, we can see that within instances, you can have multiple clusters in the environment. You can easily see which ones are suspended and which ones are running. In this case, the cluster that was running at the start of this demo has automatically suspended. Hitting Resume communicates with Kubernetes running within the AWS environment and the cluster resumes. Drilling in on this cluster, we see that it's now running. We can see total storage and cache efficiency. 
In this case, the total storage actually refers to the cache because the storage is sitting out on S3 since we're running on AWS. From here, you can also get to all statistics information. If this is an active environment, you can view things like query total times, active sessions, you can see query cache efficiency using the NVMe cache, and a lot of other information about this cluster, which is very helpful when monitoring. With the right permissions, you can modify clusters. Scaling a cluster up or down is simple and can be done incrementally on a sliding scale. This is a key feature specific only to Yellowbrick. Many other cloud-based databases restrict you to having to double the size of the cluster. So when running a four-node cluster, you have to scale it to eight, or for an eight-node, you have to double it to 16. This means that every time you scale, you're doubling or otherwise exponentially increasing your costs. With Yellowbrick, you can scale one node at a time to meet workload needs and control costs without limiting performance. Another feature to show here is, for example, when scaling up to three nodes, there is a SQL button that shows the actual SQL command that is generated, which also allows you to copy it to clipboard for automation or documentation. Let's go back and actually create a cluster as part of this demo. Going back to the cluster, hit the plus cluster button and see an interface similar to modifying a cluster. Enter a name. There are a few different node types to choose from with variations that correspond with AWS and Azure instance options. For this demo, we'll choose large version 2 and create a 5-node cluster. It can be scaled all the way up to 64 nodes with 2.6 petabytes of local NVMe cache and 8,192 CPUs. Clusters can get quite large with additional options for multiple clusters in a single environment. Let's go back to a 5-node option, which is still pretty large, with 161 terabytes of cache. Next, choose how you want this to run. We set the idle time set to 1 minute and to be initially suspended with it not being needed until later on. We then can choose which kind of workload management profile we want to associate and choose large for the type, then create the cluster. Before we leave, click on the SQL button and see the command that was issued to create the cluster. We can see a lot of information here about the clusters. We see which clusters are running in the environment, the size of those clusters, the hardware profiles, workload management profiles, and the auto suspend. There is so much information available on what is running in your environment. Next, let's start up a workload. We're showing a JMeter job designed to simulate a workload running in the environment. Yellowbrick's execution timeline is a great feature designed to show a visual timeline of what's happening in the environment. We can see the workload management profile. That profile visualizes data into various lanes where you can direct different kinds of queries. We are showing eight lanes here associated with small running queries. Four lanes are associated with large running queries and then a couple of lanes dedicated to load. You can manage all those resources within this environment which has been set to run for five minutes. Let's expand the view to one minute so we can see more detail. This reveals that what looked like lines are small dots. Each one of these dots represents one query that's running within the environment. You can see here how much workload we can run within a single small node environment. A major benefit of Yellowbrick is our ability to scale. Yellowbrick provides infinite flexibility with both a subscription model as well as an on-demand model for your clusters. For example, let's say you started with a system cluster that you've sized properly for your normal environment. If that workload runs more than eight hours a day, then it becomes more cost-effective to subscribe to that instance for a year. The subscription price will provide 24 hours of usage for essentially the same price that you used to pay for eight hours. But you may have periods of time within your workload where you need peak processing, for instance, at the end of the month or a Black Friday style event where you need to scale everything up. We provide further flexibility to combine both subscription-based and on-demand based clusters that you can spread your workloads across. Let's review how that works. Returning to the clusters, we can resume the small cluster. While that is starting up, let's go back to our execution timeline. We see the second instance has now started up. We've set up a user. Going to Access Control, we can see all users and see that we have listed two different clusters in the default. That allows users to load balance across the clusters. Returning back to the execution timeline, we can now see a second node is available. The work is being evenly and efficiently spread across those two workloads. 
Another great yellow brick feature is the Query tool. We will start another workload that will stream in inserts concurrent with all the other workloads. This ability to run multiple queries, loads, and trickle feeds into a single environment showcases the power and performance of Yellowbrick. Now that the streaming insert has started, we'll go to the Query tab, showing a query that will monitor the data that's being streamed into the Year Fact table, named Year's Insert Fact 1 table. As it spins up, we can see that in the last five seconds, we've already streamed in 780,000 records, and in the last 30 seconds, we've streamed in over 3 million records. This is all happening while our earlier workload is running its queries in the background, 845,000 in the last five seconds. We've seen performance up to millions ingested per second with varying results based on bandwidth and the number of writers in an environment. Here we are showing about 10 different users writing data in parallel. Yellowbrick is fast, really fast. Processing 14 million records in the last five minutes and 10 million in the last minute. Returning back to the execution timeline, we see that everything is running simultaneously in the background. Through the Query tool, we can choose the instance to connect to, the database, and the cluster to use. We can choose the search path, the schema to run against, and the specific role out of the many supported. Even though we have the ability to open files here, Yellowbrick is not designed to replace tools like Tello or Power BI, but it does provide a query interface, especially for DBAs, to quickly query an environment. The same inserts are inserting data into multiple tables, with all data being loaded at the same time. We can see here some dimension tables, a fact table that we are monitoring, and another fact table with data loading in. We can access the query tool here for quickly querying data and also access the sample catalog which helps to simplify things. Another great feature in Yellowbrick is the Load Assistant. This is a wizard for helping load data from an object store. Yellowbrick makes it simple. Choose the instance to run against. We only have one instance running, but if we had others, they would appear here. Choose the database to load up. In this case, we'll choose the EV Demo database and then choose the cluster to use. We'll use the cluster we've been running on to show how to manage multiple workloads within the same environment. Pick the location. Here we choose an S3 bucket to load data from. Navigate through this bucket where our data is located and choose the customer data set. Click Next to choose the format. Formats are customizable. Here we've chosen CSV. This CSV file has one header line in it and we'll choose Null for our Null marker. Those details appear here. Select the table to load into and choose Error Handling Options. Here, we chose to stop load on any error. Click Load to load that data. You'll see the SQL button. If you want to run from SQL, the command is accessed here. You can also copy that into the pasteboard for potential automation or for loading a grouping of tables. You can see that we loaded 11 million rows in about 11 seconds. And that loading occurred while all of this other activity was going on in the system. As you have seen, there's a lot of great functionality built into Yellowbrick. It's simple to get started and work inside the Yellowbrick Cloud Native Data Warehouse. We hope you've enjoyed this demo. Thanks for joining us. Please visit yellowbrick.com to learn more or to schedule a demo.